Hi, I'm Linda Williamson and I'm the Assistant Librarian at the Scriber Public Library. Today we're talking with Donna Mikulik, the CEO. Hi Donna. Hi Linda. So what are we going to talk about today? Well today uh, we're going to talk about the library services and how we're coping during the COVID uh, closure again. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of our upcoming programs uh, in this year as well as a recap on the activities that we did last year and later we're going to have a couple of the board members that are going to join us to discuss uh, their impressions of being on the library board during this time. Great. Uh, where would you like to start? Well, I'd like to start with our services that we're providing right now. It's very disappointing that the library has to be shut down once again, uh, but this is uh, the way it's going to be for the next uh, few weeks, I, we hope. So we're back to curbside and uh, unfortunately our hours are reduced. So we're not open Saturdays, uh, we're not open evenings, but we are open Tuesday to Friday from 1 to 5. So if people are interested, they can call the library and staff will find resources and we will put them in the foyer for curbside pickup. Uh, we're going to continue with uh, interlibrary loans. So that means that if we don't have a book in our library, we can order them uh, throughout the province. Libraries are part of this uh, interlibrary loan system, which is a, a free service. So Linda, could you please explain how the interlibrary loan system works in the library? Sure. If the library does not have a book that a patron is looking for, I, we're able to search through the system to see if another library has it. Uh, we will request it and um, for the most part the libraries will send the book out to us. And the patron is allowed to have the book for about three weeks, three to five weeks depending on the library that sends it. And then they return the book to us and we return it to the library. Besides interlibrary loans, we also offer free membership uh, to patrons who wish to join in the library. However, out of town, people have to pay a $5 service fee. Uh, that's an annual fee. Uh, also, at this time, there is no computer access. Uh, we're asking people to stay in the foyer when they come in the building. There is curbside pickup in the foyer. However, if anyone wishes to have their vaccinated their vaccination passports laminated or require photocopies or fax uh, staff will accommodate them but we ask that you do not come into the building our vaccination passports are free but please bring your health card Linda, could you explain how that works? Sure. So if you need your vaccination card laminated, um, if you could provide your health card, because I need the numbers on the front and the back, and then I'm able to print it off, um, make it a smaller version so it's not like a full-size page, and laminate it so it fits into your wallet. It's almost like the size of a credit card. So when you return your books, please use the Dropbox and the books will remain in the Dropbox for several days before they are brought into the library and then staff will wipe them down and put them on the shelves. We're not accepting any book donations at this time and we're not accepting any donations for Marjorie House or the food bank as well. Some of the other services that we offer in the library, we have our iPads for loan, uh, we have our Victor Readers, where people can receive discs from the CNIB. Possibly, Linda, you could talk a little bit about the Victor Readers. So CNIB provides us with CD discs that have a audiobook on the disc by numerous authors and different titles and different genres. Uh, so if somebody is having issues with not being able to read um, print, they are able to use the CD to listen to an audiobook. All you need is a library membership to take out a CD and you're able to keep it for up to three weeks. Some of the other resources that the library has on loan are walking sticks, which are great for exercising. Uh, there are two poles that help uh, provide stability. We also have VR goggles and we also just received a donation of a telescope, so that'll be our latest collection, uh, addition to our collection. 
And we're also exploring the options of possibly snowshoes. Uh, so that should be an interesting uh, item to have available for people to use. We also have a digital radon detector that's available for loan as well. Uh, if you wanted to borrow it to check your gas level in your uh, building, it's here as well. The library has a website and Facebook page, so you're able to access databases and upcoming events. And uh, also on the Facebook, we post new books, uh, resources, uh, monthly events. And also we're going to be providing quizzes and also contests. One of the interesting uh, collections we have is called Community Connections and they're available on our library website. Uh, and they are interviews of people uh, throughout the community. Linda, could you possibly talk a bit about that? Sure, it was a great project. I was so happy that I was part of it. Uh, we interviewed uh, approximately 60 people from Scriber and a few people from Rossport. So all you have to do is go to our website and it'll, you'll see the link for the community connections. You click on it, it will take you to another page and it will list um, the different interviews that we did. All you do is you click on it, it will take you right to YouTube and you're able to watch the video. Also, the library offers a wide variety of databases. Uh, they are resources on our website. And Linda will also discuss a few of those as well. Definitely. Uh, we have quite a few databases that are used. Um, some of them off the top of my head that I'm thinking about are Overdrive, where people are able to download uh, audio and ebooks. And also one of the most popular is called Our Digital World. And that was a digitization project the library did probably about 12 years ago. And there is a lot of archives on that site. There's videos, there's pictures, there's text, as well as newspaper articles. Uh, the site is easy to use. You can just type in what you're looking for in the search box and it'll bring up the information. Mm -hmm. That was a, a great project. The library had partnered with the Rail Museum in Scriber, the Terrace Bay Public Library, as well as the Nipikin Public Library. So this was a, a large grant that we had received through one of the capacity programs that was offered uh, in the, through the Southern Ontario Library Service at that time. So this was uh, pretty remarkable considering the uh, opportunity that we were able to archive, digitize, uh, these records that are still being uh, used globally. Uh, it's really interesting mod watching the st statistics and it's very, very popular. The other uh, database that was recently added to the library collection is Hoopla. Linda, would you like to talk a bit about Hoopla? Sure. Hoopla is a app that you can put on your phone or on your iPad. Some TVs now you're able to add it to also and you're able to access books, um, audiobooks, movies, music. Uh, this is a free service so uh, it also means that there's no waiting time. It, the resources can be downloaded immediately. Uh, Overdrive, the other very popular database, there is a bit of a waiting list for it. For Hoopla and Overdrive, all you need is a library card. If you would like to access Overdrive on your phone or on your iPad or any other tablet, you will need to go to uh, your app store and download Libby, which is L-I-B-B-Y, and that will give you access to Overdrive and the ebooks and the audiobooks. Hoopla is also an app and you're able to watch movies, listening to music, there's ebooks and audiobooks on that application also. I would like to thank our patrons for having patience while we're experiencing another shutdown in the building. But we're also here to help you. Please call us and we will do our best to accommodate you. And we have a wide variety of resources in our collection. We have our fiction books, our large print. We have uh, romance, we have uh, lots of children's books, we have puzzles that we loan out as well. So, and of course, our DVD collection is very, very popular as well. And we're always uh, receiving new ones 
as well. People are very generous in the community and have been donating a lot of DVDs. So once again, give us a call and we're here to help. Linda, would you have anything else to say? One of the services that we still offer is printing. If you need a document printed, just email it to us and we'd be more than happy to print it off for you. Once the document is printed off, we'll leave it in the foyer for you. When requesting books, please allow staff some time to be able to find the information for you. Uh, we would appreciate that. Donna, can you tell us about some of the programs that are upcoming and uh, past programs? Yes, we certainly have had a, a wide variety of programs having to adapt to the situation where people are not allowed to come into the library when we had our shutdowns, our closures, and unfortunately we don't allow anyone to meet in the library. Uh, so it has been a challenge trying to engage the public I would, because of the situation we're in. However, I think we're very successful. I was looking at some of our statistics and they certainly have increased uh, since the year before because we're able to do more online and be more creative with how we're uh, working with uh, offering programs. So last year was our library's 130th anniversary. So we started off with Brittany Glad designing this logo of Dewey, the library worm, wearing the COVID mask. So this was our, to celebrate our 130th anniversary. So some of the ways that we adapted uh, to the new technology was, of course, lots of Zoom meetings with uh, different programs and also our library board met by Zoom as well for a couple of years. And one of the interesting projects that we did last year was the audio pa podcasting with the Fixed Point Arts and Media program where there were a number of people, there are four of us, that received training to do audio recordings of people in the community. And they assisted with us with training and also they helped put together the program. And we had uh, a launch in December, which was very successful. Uh, that was a really great project because it helped preserve some of our local history and it will be here for future generations to enjoy as well. We also have our Scriber Media Center, uh, we, which is partnered with the library, and we have done a number of uh, productions in the library studio. And some of them have included community con connections, interviews with uh, a lot of people, and also the Media Center helps provide some training to encourage people to learn how to do uh, video productions and editing. The other program that the library offers are we loan iPads. And this was a really interesting project that we partnered with the Senior Centre who received a grant through the New Horizons grant for seniors. And they, we have 14 iPads that are on loan uh, through the library system. And the library in the previous year had received a grant from the United Way, so we were able to purchase another 12. So we have about 30 iPads that are on loan uh, for the community. The other interesting thing that we did, uh, we produced uh, a lot of children's book bags, and this year we're going to offer art kits with that program. Oh. The Baby's First Card program is a program where the baby will receive a library card and this as well as a, a small book bag with a, a welcome package and this project is in conjunction with the early on years. The North Shore 1000 books before age six was a, a really interesting project that was launched in October and this program really encourages early literacy and family interaction so this again was in partnership with uh, the, our local early on program and also it was expanded along the North Shore to include about 20 organizations. And this project, the uh, family would receive 
a bag with a book, a free book, and tracking sheets so that they could track uh, the books as they read them. And there's milestones, and after each milestone, up to a thousand books, they will receive uh, books and uh, prizes along the way. Also, the library has a book club that meet monthly. This is done by Zoom. And we have uh, books that we receive, book bags that we receive from the Thunder Bay Public Library System. And there's 10 books. So this has uh, been a great program in the library. We've offered this for uh, quite a few years. The quilting program, unfortunately, has shut down uh, because of the restrictions right now. But they, this program has been in the community for a number of years. They use the space in the Municipal Centre to do uh, projects and also there's a large quilting frame that people can do quilts on. Uh, unfortunately, it's been shut down because of COVID for over a year and a half and they were able to meet for a few months this fall and also did a number of really fun projects and the ladies were also able to meet uh, as a group and that hadn't been done in a couple of years. So unfortunately we're shut down again and people will work from home. But uh, the group would meet uh, weekly uh, and uh, also again really enjoyed uh, sharing ideas and uh, projects as well. Hopefully at some point the quilters will be able to have their Patch of Friends quilt show again. Yes, I'm I'm sure that uh, everyone is looking forward to doing that. It was a lot of fun. Again, it was a program that was in partnership with the library. And th it was just so much fun. The ladies would display over 50, 60 projects throughout the year. Uh, there was a, a huge basket auction as well and a, and a tea. And everyone really enjoyed the auction. So I, we're hoping at some point down the road that we would be able to do that. And also the ladies worked on uh, making a quilt every year that was also raffled and the proceeds would go to Marjorie House. So I think uh, last year they just made a, a cash donation to Marjorie House. And also some of the proceeds were, were donated to the library to help support the uh, Forest of Reading uh, book program that the library has uh, and it's the Blue Spruce program in particular that is offered in the elementary schools. This project had been uh, developed oh, oh, over 20 years ago uh, when I first started uh, being here, the CEO. And the library would have the students come uh, into the building to do the program, but now the program is actually uh, done by some of the staff uh, in the elementary schools. And this is a great program. There are 10 books that the children read one a week and the books are uh, created, produced by artists, Canadian artists, and at the end of the 10 weeks there's a huge vote, a provincial vote, and there's uh, a lot of uh, hoopla around that uh, with the winners of the blue spruce, there's uh, red maple, silver birch, uh, there's different age uh, categories uh, for the books. Uh, so the library again, have, we've been doing this and it's been very successful and there's also activities and now of course with uh, the COVID there are online resources as well that are being offered for the students. What are some of the other programs that are offered by the library? Well there is a book club that the library offers and right now there are two groups and they are there are 10 books that come in a book bag from the Thunder Bay Public Library System and we're allowed to have it for two months. So everyone picks up their books, they read them, and we, the, we get together through Zoom uh, meetings to discuss the, the book. There are uh, questions that are included which always make it very interesting and uh, very, very lively discussions with some of the, the books, uh, of course, depending on the topic. And there's always a wide variety of subjects that are, are covered uh, with each book. So this has been very popular. In the, before COVID, 
uh, one group would meet at the Breeze restaurant, and we were actually more like a breakfast book club, <laughs> which was uh, very popular and a lot of fun. So I'm hoping someday we'll be able to do this down the road. But right now we're doing mainly online Zoom meetings. Another program that was offered last year and will probably continue are garden Zoom meetings. And this was in partnership with the uh, Scriber Senior Centre. And we had uh, a few sessions with the Master Gardeners from Thunder Bay. They, they were very, very uh, informative and covered topics such as soil and uh, small container gardening. Didn't Graham Saunders join for a Zoom meeting to discuss his book, Gardening with Short Growing Seasons? Yes, yes, Graham did. And that was extremely informative. Uh, there was a lot of information and we discussed companion planting as well. Uh, he actually did a reprint of his book. Uh, the book was about 20 years old. So uh, this was also distributed to a lot of libraries throughout Northern Ontario that were interested in receiving his reprint. Also last year, Tracy Berry, a local artist, helped put together an online painting class. So there were 30 kits that were distributed and her first project was actually of a, an owl and we're hoping to also have her second painting class available in the next month or so, which will be a landscape. So there are about eight extra kits left. So we will certainly let uh, people know that uh, these will be available and will also uh, advertise when her next class will be available. Isn't it funny that we have a butterfly in the library and Donna is a butterfly ranger? Actually, the butterfly is a, a cabbage butterfly. Okay. It was very surprising to find one in the middle of the uh, winter, for sure. Uh, I was actually watching a, a video of a woman who had some monarch butterflies that were had hatched very late. Of course, they were not going to be able to fly south, so they were feeding it sugar water. So she was really curious to see how long the butterfly would survive uh, in, indoors. But the Butterfly Way project uh, was a, a great project. Here's a, our certificate. <laughs> Uh, so what I did was I joined up with as a ranger for the Butterfly Way project, which is a program through the David Suzuki Foundation. So there were a number of webinars, online webinars, and uh, a lot of discussions. There were a thousand participants this year. The year before, there were about 250. So th the webinars were great. They would talk about resources, ways to engage the public, to promote the importance of uh, growing flowers for pollinators, for our, our bees and wasps and insects, because after all, without them, there, were, there would be a lot of food that we would not be able to uh, have to eat. So in Scriber, one of the programs that we had been doing for uh, a number of years was every year we would distribute sunflower seeds to the elementary school children the, to grow giant sunflowers and also we provided seeds for adults as well in the community. So this time we provided sun, uh, not only sunflower seeds but flower seeds as well and we gave the schools a few uh, milkweed plants as well so we're really promoting the growth of milkweed and there are some milkweed that was grown in the community garden as well so it's uh, also a really great project to work with children. Uh, as the eggs hatch, uh, you can watch the caterpillars grow, and a lot of people will take the caterpillars uh, with the leaves and bring them inside to offer them extra protection uh, so that they will eventually hatch into uh, butterflies. So. In Scriber, we uh, asked if there were people that would like to be part of the Butterfly Way project. So we have 20 people that signed up for the project and then so now we're officially a Butterfly Way corridor. <laughs> so we're hoping to expand the program and continue with the project next year.
The uh, library also offers a seed bank. We've had that program for a number of years where people will donate some of their seeds and then they're available for anybody if they are interested. And of course our, uh, our popular uh, project, the Little Sprouts Community Garden, we had uh, about 14 families this year. And unfortunately we could not open the gates to the public. We did have it open for a short period of time in the summer at the height of when the flowers were in bloom. And the Senior Center helped uh, donate for several boxes, garden boxes, that we were built. There were about seven, eight volunteers that helped build more garden boxes, which are very popular way to garden because it uh, really saves on the back. And we're also really amazed at the amount of produce that comes out of these boxes. So there were four new boxes built and we're hoping to expand this year as well. And so people can sign up for a plot and we also have tools that are available for people to use and this project is over 20 years old. This was a project that the library started uh, as a result of a grant and we were partnered with the family place at that time and we had reading programs and the municipality was kind enough to let us uh, use a lot and uh, we had the building, there was an old building that was torn down and the soil was hauled in and we it was primarily built by volunteers and it has offered a, a lot of uh, excellent networking uh, in the community over the years with the uh, just the whole activity of people being able to to garden and, and grow healthy food and network and so we're just really thrilled that this will continue uh, in uh, the future as well. What kind of things are grown in the garden? Well there's a, a wide variety. Uh, I'm thinking that zucchini did very well. Potatoes there's uh, beans and peas and kale, uh, some tomatoes, a few carrots uh, I saw last year, uh, the squash sometimes. Oh, there was one year I remember, it was a phenomenal year. I ended up with 24 acorn squash. It was just incredible watching the vine, like every foot there was a flower and a squash. So that, that was an exceptional year for sure. Uh, so, I mean, everyone is very individual in what they want to grow. Garlic. Garlic is very popular. We started that a few years and then we had uh, a garlic growing contest in the fall that the Senior Centre sponsored with us. So we're hoping to continue with that uh, as well. And also we're going to, every year we try and plant sunflowers in the, the garden and we're going to expand with maybe more a uh, herb section as well. What are some unusual items that have been entered into the contest? Uh, we had uh, miniature cucumbers. We had peanuts one year. Uh, very large rutabagas. Enormous cabbage. <laughs> potatoes. Enormous potatoes. So uh, those are some of the, the fun things that uh, people like to uh, submit. But the, the zucchini is uh, we started off oh many years ago with the zucchini growing contest so we're always getting uh, the people that like to uh, enter their zucchinis and, and some pumpkins as well. Uh, another program that we did last year that we started was the park passes through the the province. They were offering free day passes. B because we didn't have heritage days last year the library did have a scavenger hunt and chalk drawing contest. So Linda, how, how did that work out? It turned out great. Uh, children were able to access the list of scavenger items either online or come into the library and receive a sheet of paper with the items on it. Uh, the chalk drawing contest was people were able to do it in their own yards um, or on a sidewalk someplace and submit their pictures that they had drawn. So. With the cancellation of Heritage Days, of course, we were not able to have our luncheon or a local art display, which we would usually incorporate in with it, or a guest speaker. So we're hoping that uh, this year we'll be able to have our luncheon and maybe an Avid Readers Awards as well as local history or lo local art displays. 
uh, we didn't offer a adult or children's bocce. However, the Scriber Senior Centre decided to uh, have the adult bocce. So the library assisted with helping them with the corps and with uh, we had balls and charts and so this was a, a, a great opportunity to uh, get people involved in the community and I think everyone had a lot of fun. So that will continue and hopefully this year we'll be also be able to offer the children's bocce as well. Wow. So the bocce program actually the library has this has been a tradition with the library. We had been sponsoring bocce for over 20 years in our community. So I'm just very glad that this will continue in the future, that this is a very, a very important cultural event <laughs> and it will only expand and grow. The, the other event that the library offered last year, which we will continue again this year, was a story walk and Vicki Krause's book, The Night the Tooth Fairy Didn't Show Up, was uh, featured. So this was in partnership uh, or actually we did the story walk with the uh, Scriber Barbecue, the Scriber Senior Centre Barbecue at the same time. And uh, ice cream coupons were offered uh, through the Golden Rail. So there's also in uh, the fall the Ontario Public Library Week, which is a time where libraries can really promote activities and promote the importance of literacy. So there'll be I'm sure some kind of activity that will be planned uh, during that time. And we'll probably have a number of online quizzes and contests. So, of course, it would be great if people keep posted uh, with those kinds of um, promotions. The, uh, the last project that I wanted to talk about was our family activity bags. We had received a grant from the Thunder Bay Community Foundation and we put together uh, 200 of these bags that we handed out to uh, every elementary school child, child received one and we had a variety of things in here like popcorn and hot chocolate and we had uh, books that were, were donated, uh, DVDs that were also donated and then there were uh, there was at least four, three or four crafts per bag uh, and there were some adult kits and a lot of children's kits. So these were, were I think, very much appreciated uh, during shutdown last year. Linda, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? High school students received some bags also, as well as uh, 18 graduates from the high school received a bag and some teens also received an art kit. As well as receiving the bags from the library, the library provides a reading award to one graduate each year. Yes, not only does the high school high school graduate receive a reading award from the library, also the elementary schools receive uh, an award as well. That's the Scriber Public School and Holy Angel School. And this is a program that the library has been doing for a, a long number of years. Fundraising has certainly been a challenge for us during the past year, so we always appreciate any donations. Uh, income tax receipts are available. We appreciate uh, when people donate their books and their DVDs to the library because if we're not able to put them in the collection, they're always put into the book sale. So they do not end up in the garbage, they end up being used. So when the library is finally open, any donations of books and DVDs will be greatly appreciated. So Linda, I would really like to thank you and as well David Costa for all your support and great work during the COVID situation. I think that you have provided a great service uh, to our patrons in the community and I would like to just show my appreciations or share my appreciation for all your, your work. Thank you, Donna, for coming in and explaining to us how the library works and what programs and services are available to us. Thank you for everything that you do for our community.
I'm upstairs now in the library and we're going to be talking with David Costa, who's also a librarian, and we'll be talking about some of our roles in the library. Hi, David. Hi, Lynn. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So tell us about some of your jobs that you do in the library. Well, I do all sorts of things here at the library. Uh, I process, order, and ship interlibrary loans. Uh, I put away books as well as shelf reading. Um, I also process and catalog our new books that we get. Um, I also work at the front and I help patrons that come in who need assistance with anything from finding books or printing out documents, photocopying, stuff like that. We received 14 iPads from the Scriber Senior Center through a grant that they had written in 2021 and we also received 12 for the library from the New Horizons Seniors Grant. David, how does somebody go about receiving one of the iPads that we have? Well, they'll first contact us and let us know that they're interested in getting an iPad. Then they'll come into the library, they'll sign a waiver, uh, we'll give them a little booklet, a little guide, and we'll go through that and kind of show them everything that's in the iPad and what they can do with it and stuff like that. Um, they have to be a library member, so we'll, if they're not a library member, we'll make them a library card. We'll check it out to them and they can take it home. How long are they allowed to keep the iPad for? Uh, as of right now, they can pretty much keep it for as long as they want. Because we have a total of 30, uh, 28 are out right now, so we do have two more Samsungs that are still available if people still want some. See, all the iPads come with protected covers. They're all set up and ready to use. The only thing that we have to do for them is either if they already have an Apple ID, we will just use their Apple ID, log them in, and it's there to use. If they don't have one, we can create an Apple ID for them right here at the library. Um, and once that's all done and set up, they can take it home. So basically, we provide technical support if anybody has any issues. Yes, we do. Uh, and some of the more common issues that people have when taking an iPad is trying to log into Facebook or Instagram or something like that or uh, trying to download a new app that they want to they wanna access and you know some, some people don't want to do that. That doesn't just apply to people who have borrowed an iPad from the library. Anybody who's having any technical problems with their iPad or their phone can give us a call and we'll walk them through it. Some people have trouble accessing the internet not knowing where the internet is and we'll show them what app to use to get onto the internet and show them how to use the internet. Downloading apps is kind of difficult for some people. Uh, we can show them how to download apps and also search for apps that they would like to download. Uh, another common thing that people need help with is photos. Uh, a lot of people like to take photos nowadays and what we can do is we can help people with exporting, sharing, and printing of their photos from their iPad to either the computer or having an actual physical, co physical copy of it. Another common question is, what is the iCloud? Well, the iCloud is a storage location where you can basically store all your photos forever. You can use the iCloud to access your photos from your phone, your computer, your iPad, and basically you have access to them as long as you have a device with you and you'll always have those photos. So David, I know that you volunteer for the Scriber Media Center. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I help Kim Krause with some of the camera operating, camera production. It's hard for one person to go out and cover an event. So what I'll do is I'll go with Kim and I'll help him shoot the new story that he's covering. So one of the other programs that we're running is a monthly book bag. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So it's a great program and we've been doing it for almost a year now. So basically a child will sign up for the program and each month they will receive a bag which contains uh, one or two crafts and one or two books um, to with whatever theme is going on that, that month. This year we've decided to offer a art kit which is a one-time purchase of $20 and it includes markers, paints, tape, uh, scissors, pencil sharpener, pencils, uh, paint brushes, um, and paint paper. Uh, it's um, 
it's an optional part of the monthly book bag and so if you'd like to register your child just give us a call and we can um, start providing books for them each month well that's great Linda I think I might end up putting my name into that Another program we've been having is uh, Tracy Berry is a local artist and this is one of the paintings that she's created. Uh, this video for this painting, which is a step-by-step -step video, is currently on YouTube and we're just waiting for um, the next video to be completed. Uh, the art kits have been given to people from the library. I think we have eight more kits available, so if you're interested in it, just give us a call and we'll be able to provide the kit. And it contains your painting canvas, as well as brushes, uh, in instructions on exactly what you need for the kit, as well as, like I said, brushes and paints. And what you do is you just watch the video, you can stop it at any time to try and catch up, and you just create your own creation. So that video is on our YouTube channel, the Scrubber Media Center. So if you would like to see more content from us, please go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And we'd love to see the finished product. So you can send us a picture of your painting on our Facebook page, or you can just email it to us at libinfo at scriber.ca. So part of my job is collecting statistics um, from programs to databases to patron visits, um, any kind of statistics that will help improve our services are collected each month. So David and I will work together sometimes, and especially when we were putting together the family uh, kits together. That's right. That was a lot of fun. Right now it's very important that people have their vaccine cards so they're able to uh, go into a restaurant or into different establishments that require you to have your vaccine. I personally would like to thank Donna uh, for all her guidance and everything when it comes to uh, making my job easier and learning new skills and to David for all of his help that he provides um, and thank you to the board of the Scarborough Public Library for their continuing support. So good day and I'm Brenda Osmussen and uh, I am uh, one of the uh, co-chairs for the uh, Scarborough Public Library. And I'm Marilyn Turcott, and I am the other co-chair of the Scriber Public Library Board. How did you get started, Brenda? How long have you been here now? I've been here about seven or eight years that I've been uh, a part of the board. I've only been uh, in the chair position, like you and I, for the yeah. last year yeah. or so, it's just under a year, yeah, yeah that, that we've been uh, sharing this position. Yeah. And um, I got started because they were looking for um, other board members and recently retired and thinking, oh, I love reading and uh, yeah. the library is just part of our community and I had some time to give to it. So, yeah. and I'm really happy that I did. That I did. Yeah. yeah, what about you, Marilyn? Um, well, I started, I started after you. I know you had been a member for a while when I started. So I think I've been on about four or five years, mm -hmm. going on five years, I think now. And uh, I started because Donna, they, were, they needed a board member. Mm -hmm. Donna had asked me a couple of times, but at that time, early on, I was still working at the St. Martin School Library. Library. And, and so I really didn't have the time that I, because I wasn't sure what this was all about and how much time it would take. Mm -hmm. um, so when I retired from St. Martin School, I was talking to Donna and they still needed another <coughs> member. And I said, yeah, sure, I'd love to give it a try and, and see what it's all about. Good. So, and probably like you, I had to write a letter to the town council. Yes, and exactly. Say, say I'm interested in being a member of the, yeah. the public library board. Yeah. And then uh, they, in their meetings, approved. Now me they approved your your position. position and, yeah. and, and we couldn't actually come on board 
with the board until, until they they approve that at, at the that municipal approval. level. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So there's a little bit of formality there. Yeah, it is. To, to go in, I but know, uh, that surprised me because yeah. I thought you just sort of started. But no, you have to actually be officially approved. Approved to, and, to uh, be able to do that. And so then you, then you sit at, uh, on, yeah. the, board, on yeah. the library board. So it's been a big learning experience yeah, for sure. And we meet. Um, uh, monthly and about 10 times a year yes. uh, and that's governed by sort of the uh, library services board you for know Ontario. how many to, for Ontario for how Ontario. many times that, that that you meet but we do meet yes. um, about yeah, uh, yeah once a month and over the summertime with you know if we need to if we need to if but if, if not maybe we get like a month off or a something break, a but break yeah. in the summer yeah and yeah. I know that the requirements for Ontario Library Service is not quite that often, mm -hmm. but I know between Donna and the board, mm -hmm. we've decided that we sort of meet monthly, and I think that it's good. It, it is good. It keeps a pulse on what, what's happening. Because well, if you go a couple months uh, without meeting, yeah. you know, lots happens. It's, it's a, a busy lot, place. It's amazing yeah. for a small, you know, community library, how yeah. much comes up in the course of a month. So, a month, so. I think it's really good, the monthly yeah. meetings. We stay on top of things. Yeah. I think it's I really, we can. I really enjoy that too, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, at our meetings or some of our board responsibilities are looking at policies that have been developed or maybe need to be changed yeah. uh, or accommodated and especially with this COVID thing that's right. been going on, uh, you know, some policies had to be uh, uh, adapted or whatever or so and, and created, yeah. exactly. So yeah. us as a board yeah. are able to look at those things. and. Um, we were involved in quite a strategic planning yeah. um, in service with, uh, yeah. um, I forget the gentleman's name, but he came from in Sudbury. From, from, from Sudbury yeah. and uh, we had quite a yes. um, condensed and sort of uh, um, in service yeah. uh, about a strategic yeah. plan so I, that, yeah. I found the strategic plan, I found that so interesting, mm -hmm. but so detailed. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you set your goals and your objectives and, and, and you have to be so How specific. are you going to meet them? With and them. Uh, so that you're not just, oh, well, winging it. No. You have a plan yeah. that's that's written up and... And it's, uh, and it's yeah. all set there for you. It's kind yeah. of like once you get everything decided, it's kind of fill in the blanks. Yeah. And yeah. you have to sort of say when, how long are we going to yeah. take to do this and what is the most important one we want to work and on. And it has to be renewed yeah. each time, uh, yeah. you know, our council changes and everything, our strategic plan has to be has renewed to be and updated. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, it but yeah, that's actually enjoyable work too, though. And when, they, I, when I first started, um, you had been here bef before me. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first started the first couple of meetings, you were all so excited about the accreditation. And yeah. I kept thinking, what in the world is, is, <laughs> is, is accreditation? Is, does that mean if yeah. you're accredited for, to be accredited. Yes. And so. So yeah. that's another layer. Yeah. And so the library has had um, two accreditations, and we have our little. Uh, a plaque here or, or a diploma or yeah. whatever saying <laughs> that we pass with flying colors uh -huh. and um, and it's actually from if we just pull it out here it's from the Minister of Tourism Culture and Sport so what they do is they have a scrutinizer I guess is maybe the word to use comes in and actually um, there's like numerous questions and areas that need to be addressed and so your library is just like opened up to everything yeah. and they look at all your policies and procedures and mandates and yeah. staffing yeah. and the actual you building know, Donna said even the, yeah, the building, building itself. how far the shelves are yeah. apart how high they are yeah. but in essence so I feel that when you're accredited your library is just it's just its level of 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 work and yeah. sort of resource for the community etc is it's just raised it's, up a little bit more up. because yeah. uh, you have allowed somebody to come in and look at your organization yeah. and and how it, it's running and it so gave, and it's it quite gave, a thing it gave all of you a chance to go through every single every part single of the running of the library mm -hmm. just to see well how does it work and well, yeah. Did, oh, this is something that we really need yeah. to do. So let's get this done. And so I was part yeah. of the policy review for that strategic plan, and 
being on the board for a couple of years, you know, we have the opportunity to look at policies. There's binders of them. Yeah. And then when I was part of that strategic plan, I'm part of me, part of the accreditation and the policy review, we reviewed every word in every policy. Yeah. And we did a lot of homework at home, but then we got together and uh, it really gave me uh, the accreditation a really, really uh, fine uh, look at the yeah. running of the library. Yeah. So it, it, it's yeah. great, I think, and, I, and yeah. we're up for it again in, in a couple well, of years. So, Marilyn, I was there just you go. Say, <laughs> I, actually, I, I'll be glad when that does come mm -hmm. because I think we should all go through that at least once while we're serving on the library uh, board. On the board, yeah. yeah. No, it really gives you a, quite an understanding of... Uh, of the mandates and uh, the ministry. And there's a and lot of so much background yes. in, in the running yeah. of and so yeah. many rules. And, yeah. and you're not just a small community library, you're part yeah. of all the public libraries of Ontario. Uh, of Ontario. Yeah. And there's actually a Libraries Act. You know yeah. what I mean? That the the governing of this library, yeah. you have to follow that act. Uh, so that's, that is kind of cool. Um, so we have a... Uh, a user agreement with our municipality yes, uh, for uh, so it's it is a legal document yeah. that is signed by the municipality, right? right. So because this library building mm -hmm. is a municipal building, building, right. and we need to have an agreement with the munis municipality mm -hmm. that we use it, this building, that we use this building a a yeah. as a library. Yeah. So um, uh, definitely, it's, it's an official part. <coughs> it's of, an official of part of the municipality. Yeah. yeah, and it's just been redone and. Is actually sitting at the table for the <laughs> municipality to to sign, yes. and that will be done, you know, probably as we speak, yeah. uh, and and that will be done. So that's yeah. another uh, layer, just to to define, yeah. right, what, yeah. what we what we use, etc. So when we have our board meetings mm -hmm. almost every month, yes, um, it's just to sort of think about all of the different parts of the board meetings and the things that we do there, mm -hmm. and uh, so we have. Um, Don is the CEO, and, and we have a, a secretary, mm -hmm. and it's all very official. We have mm -hmm. motions and seconds and pass, and yeah. And so we go through, we have an agenda at each of our meetings, right? and we go through any old business, and uh, then Donna, as uh, the librarian, head librarian, gives mm -hmm. her librarian's report, report. Yes. and as a member of our board, library board, we have... Uh, counselor from the municipality who is with us at yes. each of our meetings. At and each of our meetings and he gives a yeah. report. Right now it's Dave Morrow. Yes, it's Dave. And uh, he he sort of brings us up to date on anything that's mm -hmm. been happening with uh, the town meetings and municipality. Yeah. And, and he's sort of our avenue too to bring yeah. things back to the council. Yeah. You know, if we're looking for clarification or whatever as a board and, yeah. and whatever, he's sort of that that yeah. go-to person. Yeah. So it is good to have him oh, there. Absolutely. It, uh, definitely. And we look at the budget at every meeting. At every it's, meeting. it's right there at every, the top of the agenda. Yeah, yes. And uh, it's pages and pages <laughs> of numbers. Um, um, yeah. But um, and and at first it's sort of like overwhelming. It, I think it was as a new me. board member. It was like me. I was looking at Ooh. those pages and yeah. thinking, wow. <laughs> wow. But, but as you yeah. as you look at it monthly, it yeah. starts to make sense yeah. and um, and to realize yeah. that the budget is mm -hmm. set by the library by the library by the library like right. the, you know the 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 budget is set mm -hmm. and then it's brought to us and we go through it line yes. by line you know, line by line to yes. if we need any increases or if we have any surplus or mm -hmm. and then all of that has to go to the municipality yes for them for their approval or if they have any changes mm -hmm. or whatever but it's all done step by step it's done step by step yeah. and and the ownership is with the library yes. itself so but, that's really but good but that we set the budget, the municipality. It does not. We, we set yeah. the budget for yeah. the year. So we look at what's needed. We look at staffing and what right. their needs might be or, you yeah. know, those kind of things. Yeah, and uh, a pay increase coming. Pay increase, yes. Summer students. Yep. Anything yep. like that. Grants, any of the grants that uh, yes. Donna has applied for and gotten and how that money's going to be used. Used and, yeah. and, and spent yeah. to the benefit of our of yeah. our library. That's yeah. quite a community place, it, it, our oh, library. Absolutely. We're really yeah. fortunate yeah. To, uh, to, to have that. Yeah. So there's... Um, Seven of us that sit on this board. It's, there's not just Marilyn, you and I, right? So, <laughs> so there are seven. we we have we have others that yeah. uh, that that join in, and our our new member will be Kelly Chisholm from, yeah, from uh, Rossport. Yeah. So our friend and colleague and oh, passport yeah. member Linda Trapp, Linda Trapp has been 
on oh, the board for 20, 20 years, years uh, you know, representing Rossport. Yeah. And she was uh, so good. good. Yes, at, we're going to miss Linda. Out of yeah. all of the things like the strategic plans mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the accreditation mm -hmm. and all, mm -hmm. anything and all the policy reviews. Yes, very good. She has such a gift yes. for going through all that language yeah. Yeah. And, and seeing, you know, if there's been, if something needs to be changed yeah. or brought up to date. Very good or, with all that oh, fine tuning of things. She, and, yeah, I'm just amazed so, yeah. at her. She so was, 20 years of, of Volunteering, volunteering is really quite a feat mm, yeah. and um, now we've got Kelly who's shown an interest and yeah. I think we're looking forward to yeah. Kelly too and she's got she's vivacious yeah. and I think she'll bring yeah. a lot of really good input and we have that you know, connection with yeah, Rossport, with, with Rossport which with that community. we're happy to maintain oh, too yeah. you and, know so and so Kelly will come as yeah. a representative from there so that's really cool so we've got, um, you know, so we're, we're uh, Marilyn and I are co-chairs, which is a new position, <laughs> but we've, uh, just with our, you know, our other commitments and sort of our commitments with our families yeah. here and there, that having a co-chair seems to work, and um, it is working, and I think it gives our, our CEO, Donna, a little bit more accessibility to somebody for signing yeah, or whatever purpose, you know. Is yeah, exactly. And it also gives us a bit of flexibility flexibility so that if you have to be away way, like then, then, then and, the other way. and vice versa yeah, so, so and know. we share running yeah. the meetings and yeah. and that, that works out really well yeah, too I think it works so we out have treasurers well. and secretaries yeah. and like you know like yeah. committees that 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 come and go everything anytime mm -hmm. something comes up Donna will say we can we have a committee for that for that and yes. people volunteer mm -hmm. yeah. 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 and we've good. been we've been meeting on zoom yes and who yes. would have thought but yeah. we've gotten accustomed to uh, doing Zoom meetings, yeah, yeah. and um, in December of 2021, we had our first face-to-face -face yes. meeting um, because we were able to, yeah. and it was uh, it followed was so by a nice. little Christmas gathering. Yeah. However, now we're in January yes. of 2022, and we're and back, to, we're back Zoom. to Zoom. So next week we'll be Zooming again. But wasn't it good just to be back together? Again? It was so great yeah. to just to feel everybody's yeah. vibes and, again. And, and, you know, you know? It felt yeah. more normal, right? Yeah, which but COVID, is kind of cool. When you think about COVID, and so that went, that sort of goes back to any of the policies and rules that and protocols that we had to follow, mm -hmm. and that and so we're following municipality rules and provincial mm -hmm. rules and. And Ontario Library rules for that. Mm -hmm. And what has amazed me through all of this time that COVID's been around is how well this library has That's functioned, done. continued to function. And have been so creative uh, in, in offering yeah. uh, yes. programming and uh, to our community. Yeah. Um, like there's been like over 50 programs uh, yes. done, yes. you know, like adding on to existing yeah. ones and whatever, but, um, and people being unable to walk into the building for the most part of the yeah, last two years. Right. Um, you know, you wonder, oh, how are people going to get things? But, but they our do. social the media and the curbside pickup, it's safe. It's safe for community, safe for yeah. our workers here, at, and, you know, in the library. And they're so organized. So when you do a curbside, they have that little table set out yeah. in a little vestibule and you, you open the outside door and, and, and pick up your book. Pick up your book and, <laughs> and away you go with your mask. And, yeah. you know, if you feel yeah. like you have to wash your hands, you're, yeah. there's something there for you to do, to do that so the I library just, has done amazing I think amazing so much has to be said yeah. for Donna yeah. and Linda and David yeah that they have continued their programs and yeah. they've created new programs and they've yeah. continued to serve as a library in books in and out yeah. and, and at times they yeah. had to work from home yes you know so they were running that library yeah. uh, and, and that again was another bit of a challenge yes. because of all the all the computer yeah. and I'm not a computer person but I know there was some technology things oh, that needed to be addressed and, yeah. um, and at the same time, they, did they, it. they kept up with all yeah. of their stats and, and uh, yeah. anything that had to that has to happen on the computer and online. Yeah. I, I think they just deserve so much credit oh, for, they, they really, for getting really us do. through yeah. these these yeah. years now these with years, COVID. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, when you can come and pick up a book and take it home and oh, read it, yeah. it's a, sub, a normal thing to do. It's a normal thing it to do. Us in contact and with offering things. fun things, like for, for yeah. young families oh. to, you know, with their uh, you the know, craft, craft bags and art bags. 
bakes and, and book things bakes. like and book yeah. bakes oh, and um, you know I think that's been amazing that and that kind of helps people with their mental health right yes, and, it does. and keeps it a little bit lighter yeah. and yeah. still sort of some normalcy because it's um, like it's still yeah. a connection outside of your home that's yeah. still part of the community and and they enabled us to be able to do oh, that it's and, just, and it's, it's just that. total you know good so you know um, They've had to change policies, you know, they had to do a lot of COVID policies yes. for the yes. library here. Um, and some of the other policies that we that we follow here are developed like through the municipality, your health and yes. safety and, you know, emergency and, and all those kind of policies. But yeah. they've had to sort of be right on their toes with as... Yep. Things provincially changed and municipally, so did yeah. our library, yes. right? And they were right on it. Yeah, they were. Because yeah, we're really quite proud of them. And we sort of have to tweak a few things to make it mm -hmm. workable for here. Mm -hmm. And absolutely. I think that will be ongoing, mm -hmm. I you know, so for the too. next little it bit. Seemed, it definitely will be on, that's, ongoing. That's what seems yeah. to be reality for us right now. So we've had some fun as a library board, <laughs> though, too. We've had some great um, highlights, right, mm -hmm. uh, working. Yeah. Um, uh, or being part of oh, this yes. board and we've talked about our strategic plan we've talked about accreditation yeah. our meetings together yeah. you know have been they're really good working meetings yes. but we've also shared some camaraderie too which, yes, which, I, which, which I think really is get, really good you get to know to, each, to other. Know each other on, on a different venue yeah. and we had like the 125th in 2017 yes. for the library which was an, yes. an amazing thing yeah. and, and uh, it was really nice to be part of that um, and uh, and the things that the li that this library does to take part in other when mm -hmm. we could when you know, we take could. part in other community events like Heritage Days, Days and, and that's the, right. the lunches at the rec center, center. And, and bocce yeah. ball and bocce <laughs> ball and and bringing in authors yes. and people oh, you know local to, authors, local authors yeah. to, to to promote what what yeah. they've written yeah. and um, just to keep up on that heritage in, in yes. Scriber. I think it's wonderful. Um, and also, I, I when I came on the board, uh, uh, quite a large grant was was received to do the renovations here yes. at, at our library. So, and I remember coming in and packing up boxes and, <laughs> and helping with that. That was yeah. quite an endeavor. Yeah. But you know what? In the long run, it's a fresh paint, new windows. It's it's oh, warmer. It what looks, you know, nice new this, carpet. This is and an old building. This is a very old building. And you would and not know it. No, you would not know it's, it. So it's so fresh and mm -hmm. bright yeah. and really well done and yeah. and the space is so well used like every every inch every is inch used. you know is, is, is great yeah. so hopefully yeah. once COVID yeah. uh, finally you know mm -hmm. passes by we can have the little ones in this area again which was so nice to see and one of, you know one of the fun things since I started on the board that uh, they were able to get grant for and uh, with and Kim Kim Cross is is uh, heading is the mm -hmm. Scriber Media Center. Oh, I think yeah. that is so good. It's, it's and and the the quality that's coming uh, out I, of that media center is I, amazing. When you when you look it's at the, at the wonderful. little list, list of the videos yeah. that you can access on yeah. you know and online. the views yes. that the Scriber Media Center gets mm -hmm. for yeah. a smaller community. It, it's 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 wonderful and just captivating all those yeah. wonderful things and maybe not such wonderful things maybe a little bit of you know well, issues that our community has part, to face. It's all part of it, and right? it's all it part has of to that. All be civic, civically yeah. oriented. C right? Civically oriented. And, and, good, good. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. But I mean, the light up the night at the oh yes. over at the cemetery, yeah. and I mean the lighting of the Christmas tree this year. I remember saying to um, our the mayor, our mayor, Kevin. Mm -hmm. I said, this is such a mm -hmm. nice event. It's such a nice event, And I event, said, yeah. you know, I mean, the weather was so awful that mm -hmm. night, and mm -hmm. we still had a good crowd, and we yeah. lit the Christmas tree down there at, at the uh, yes, building. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Those are the things you know that you need to to record. Yeah, to, to record. And, and it's nice yeah. to look back and and, and, and the like at the, the like just for the last couple of months, like Remembrance Day. You know, yeah. like it's so well attended here, and yeah. uh, um, people just really can sit back and think about yeah. you know what these people did for yeah. us and your family members too and you know, you know the latest, so the latest little recordings of just the voices yes I mean, we, we were interviewed and then it was just fixed our, point the fixed yes, point thing yeah. was, it was, it was just amazing our, everybody's voice and you yeah. listen you recognize the voice and to hear all yeah. those memories the memories of I, I thought that was mm -hmm. just lovely yeah I, I really, think so too it's just a really great way you know because there's so many um i was talking to um someone that I work with now mm -hmm. and uh, she was she was watching some of those um, 
some of the things that the Scriber Media Center has done. And she said, gee, they're referring to a place called, she was talking about when the, the, the celebration, when the Japanese internees right. had come back, and uh -huh. there was a celebration for them, and they were reminiscing, and, and she said they were talking about some place called the Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she said, where, what, where would that have been? She said, I've driven all over town, I can't find it. No. Said, well, well. <laughs> it, it's not there yeah. anymore. So I was explaining to her what the, the yeah. Blue Lagoon, the swamp. The swamp, and, and, yeah. and But it just goes to show you that, you know, all of these things that are talked about now in those little videos mm -hmm. and, well, it's and history. audio recordings yeah. Yeah. is the history of the town. So new people, when they come, if they listen and watch, yeah, and they don't know where those no. things were, so it's kind of nice to, you know, get it, it. get it recorded and, and have it recorded uh, yeah. because yes, it, yeah. it can be lost so quickly. Yeah. So you know, we're we're looking forward to our to the future with the library. You know, there's yes. been some changes provincially. There used to be like a northern service yeah, and we a were, southern service. There we were Ontario Library North, North and yeah. then there was Ontario Library, library South. South. Yes. And now it's joined, now right? It's just Ontario Library. library, and it's in Sudbury. Yeah. Uh, the the main they've got the office, office there. there. Yeah, and so, I I wonder about that. Yes, we I think we always do as yeah. Northerners, but because so far I think they've given us you know some support. But and, you and know you the good thing is all of our northern public libraries are a real team. Yeah, they are. They they work together. They they, they network. Have, they yes, network all the absolutely. time on Zoom yeah. and whatever. I think yes. in the past they could actually be together, but now they Zoom. Now they Zoom. Yeah, they're very strong. Yeah. Um, and I get that sense from when Donna talks to us about you know her activities for yeah. the month, right? That's and, right? And the networking that that's going and on that way. there's a lot of yes. there, and you know how mm -hmm. are you dealing with issue, this mm -hmm. issue? And mm -hmm. so I think we're lucky that way, and yeah. I, and so I think this can work. Yeah, it can work. Because we're not an isolated little library. No, because our small towns in our northern communities mm -hmm. have undergone so much in the last number of years and downsizing yeah. and, yeah. you know, uncertainty with, yeah. um, you know, work. But yeah. we're holding our own yes. and, you and know. funding, when you think about it, like yes. our, all the communities are, are having a funding problem yeah. in the, as a whole community. So then, you yeah. know, you have to really really trying to keep that funding coming in so and and yeah. grants and, and grants and Donna our, just she's and Donna is so good for grants yeah. that uh, and uh, you know unfortunately our uh, Donna will be will be she's uh, looking to retire she's looking to retire this year from the library and yeah. we're really feeling um, well yeah. sad about that uh, sad. because uh, Donna has uh, mm. been here a good 20 yes. years or so too yeah. and um, her ability to uh, search out and, and do grant it. writing and, so and, and all and to be able yeah. to offer more and more right. for our library will be yes, yes. because so. the budget from the town mm -hmm. gets us through the year but it's the grant money, so money that and it's donations too and people, donations people yeah people donations. have been are pretty good very generous yeah very right? generous the, about yeah. giving yeah. us donations yeah. and, and that we put helps. them aside for yeah. you know different projects That's that right. we might want to do, and we've got a few in the back burner yeah. as a library that we've yeah. been toying with and thinking yeah. about. That, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. but uh, yes, a deck out the back, uh, a deck out the a back, maybe deck. where yes. you know uh, <laughs> a little reading area yeah. out there where people can come have a and, coffee and read yeah. A book. So you know that that's our dream, that's but it's, dream. it is good to, to dream, and yeah. it's good as a board yeah. to have some of those things to look forward to. So mm -hmm. yes, so. Um, we look forward to working together in, in years in years ahead and yes. staying on the board. Um, you know, our term usually coincides with the municipal yes. term, so we're asked at those times, are, are we wanting or can continue. we con continue yeah. and that kind of yeah. thing. So we're hoping that, yeah. you know, we, we can, you know, depending on, on what's going on yeah. in our lives at That's that point, right. but it's, uh, but it, it's, it's, it's nice, very rewarding. It's, yes. It is. It's yeah. a very, it's a very yeah. uh, nice, um, a mm -hmm. learning experience, but it's a good thing to mm -hmm. be part of, I, mm -hmm. I think. And I, I think so stuff. too. So yeah. I look forward to many years yeah. of working with you, Marilyn, too. <laughs> yes. And, and, yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, and I think maybe just uh, we haven't really talked about the staff that much, but you know our staff have have done so well this year. Yes. Um, you know, Linda and David yes. and and Kim at, at yeah. the media center. Uh, you know, you know, going through hoops and and things to make yes. it work. And uh, you know, we hear such positive comments 
that's out in the community for our staff how yeah. helpful they are yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know if you've got a need or a want and yes. or you need just, information you, you just phone. phone and they will try yes. their best or at least or yeah. refer you on but they'll try to best yeah. accommodate you and, and uh, still accessing interlibrary loan well, because if, yes. you, if you're looking for something and they yeah. don't have it here yeah. Either Linda or David will search yeah. it out, and they'll say, "Yes, we can get it for you." And, and yeah, and our, you know, our participation yeah. in the library has increased. Our, yeah. you know, our, our loan, yes. our, you know, our, our patrons, our, our patrons, patrons have, yeah. have really the increased, and yeah, really and our membership. So that those yeah. are all very positive things that us as a board are quite proud of. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and I thought it was so nice that they um, they they have a service that they have for people now. If you bring in your vaccine Vaccinate. papers, yeah. yes, and they will access mm -hmm. your your whatever online and online and, and you a little yes card. which is is so good for people not yeah. everyone is so you know no, sobby papers. with uh, the yeah, iphone or, or whatever yeah. it's called eh? so yeah. yeah this works yeah good service oh, great so so nice to have a little chat with nice you Marilyn. To have a chat. nice to sit down and talk about and talk yes talk about, exactly yes. so yeah. uh yeah so we'll look forward to seeing you next week on our i think next week's our meeting i, um, it's our meeting uh, I think week. it might be next week yeah, so anyway I mean, yeah. Is, good. yeah so okay great chatting with you okay same here Marilyn. and good work